I'd like to welcome each one of you back to our study today in the book of 1 Peter. <clears throat> Thank you for joining us. Thank you for each one who shares these devotional series uh, videos so that we can get the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ into more and more homes. Obviously, the more people that share, the more people are able to hear and uh, we thank you for that we encourage you if you've been tuning in lots and you've not uh, liked our page so that you automatically get them that you would do so and uh, that uh, that would be a help to you we've been looking at god's standard for consistent christian living and uh, as we looked at these verses at the end of last week and there's a desperate need in the world that we live in for Christians to be consistent in their walk with God, for Christians to have a consistent testimony in the world that we live in. And we saw that last week, and God gives us some standards for consistent Christian living in verses 8 through 11 of 1 Peter 3. Then in verse 12, we saw the reasons that we have those standards, that we serve a God who sees us, we serve a God who hears us, and we serve a God who chastens us when we need to be chastened. And uh, we should be thankful for that. You ought to be fearful if you claim to be a child of God and you can live any way you want you please. And uh, you're not experiencing the chastening hand of God. You want to be careful. Um, because the Bible says, whom the Lord loveth he chasteneth. And in Hebrews 12, um, that if we can live any way we please and not experience God's chastening, then we are illegitimate children. We are not truly His. Today I want to look at standards for having a good conscience. It's so important in the world that we live in that we are able to have a good conscience. And the Bible tells us in 1 Peter 3, verses 13 through 15, how we can have a good conscience. It says there, in those verses, it says, and who is he that will harm you if ye be followers of that which is good? But, and if ye suffer for righteousness' sake. Now there's a clarifying statement there. It's for righteousness' sake. Happy are ye, and be not afraid of their terror, and neither be troubled. But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts, and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. So as we come into these verses, we find some standards for maintaining a good conscience. And the first thing that the Bible tells us is that we are to maintain personal integrity. And we do that by following that which is good. Notice what it said in verse 13. Who is he that will harm you if he be followers of that which is good? So we need to keep in mind that the way that we maintain our integrity is we need to follow that which is good. That we need to do that which is honoring and pleasing to the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm reminded of what it says back in the book of Philippians, and in chapter 4, and in verse 8, it says, Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, think on these things. So, we need to think on the right things, and we need to do the right things if we're going to have integrity in our lives as believers there's a difference between reputation and integrity reputation is what people perceive you to be and sometimes people can put on a false front and be somebody that they're really not and reputation is what people perceive you to be integrity is who you really are even when there's nobody else around um what kind of a person am i and integrity has to do with the character of a person and then we also see that uh, he tells us that we also can maintain a good conscience when we maintain a proper attitude about suffering righteously. When you and I suffer for doing, and, and this isn't just talking about suffering because we're a Christian. Friends, this is talking about when we do that which is right and we suffer for doing what is right. It says in verse 14, but if you suffer for righteousness' sake, happy are ye, and be not afraid of their terror, and neither be troubled. So as we come into these verses, it reminds us here, uh, and certainly it, it's mostly applicable to suffering because we're a child of God, mockery because we're a child of God. But sometimes, you know, maybe even the workplace, we can do what is right. And as a result of doing what is right, we can be mocked for it, we can be ridiculed for it. 
And um, so many times we suffer for right, and we need to maintain that proper attitude to not get bigger, but just simply to forgive and to allow the Lord to take care of those things. Understand that vengeance belongs to him. Vengeance does not belong to me. In Matthew chapter 5, Jesus said this to his disciples in the Sermon on the Mount. It says there in verses 11 and 12, Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceeding glad, for great is your reward in heaven, for so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. So these verses talk more about ju more than just experiencing persecution or rejection. It's talking about how I handle that persecution and how I handle that rejection. And then we also see in verse 14 that we are to maintain faith in God, not fear of man. It says, be not afraid of their terror, neither be troubled in the end of verse 14. Friends, our faith needs to be in God. And it's interesting, Hebrews 13, 5 says, I will let your conversation be without covetous and be content with such things as ye have. For he has said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. And then goes Hebrews 13, 6 says, Because God has said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee, we may boldly say, The Lord is my helper, and I will not fear what man shall do or what man can do unto me. So our faith needs to be in God. The one that we need to fear is God, not fearing men. And then in verse 15, it, it talks about maintaining a proper place in our lives for God. It says, but sanctify the Lord God in your heart. That carries with the idea of God being set apart in our lives. That it's our desire to do those things and honor and please Him. S separation and holiness not only mean that I am separated from sin, but it means that I am separated unto the glory of God. That I want to do those things that... <clears throat> excuse me, that are honoring and pleasing to him. You know, many times it's sad when people quote this verse, 1 Peter 3.15. How many times have you heard people start, even preachers start, at be ready always to give an answer to every man that ask of the reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. Well, friends, the truth of the matter is, I will not really be ready to give an answer until, first of all, God is sanctified in my heart. That I am set apart toward him. That I am living a life that honors and pleases him. That I'm walking with him. And as I walk with him, and as I have that fellowship with him, he then gives me, and as I study his word, he gives me the answers I need to be ready to give that answer to a man. You know, when somebody asks you, what makes you different? What is it that gives you the hope and the peace and the comfort you have in the midst of this world of turmoil? The Bible says, friend, that you need to be ready to give an answer to every man. And the only way that we're able to give an answer of the hope that is in us is if we are at that place in our lives that God, first of all, has the proper place so that others can see Jesus in us, and then we make much of the Word of God, reading His Word, studying His Word, meditating upon it, so that the Holy Spirit of God can give us the answers that we need at the times that we need them because we are familiar with the Word of God. And it talks about the importance here after God has had that proper place in our lives of us having a proper witness before men. But sanctify the Lord God in your heart and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh the reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. Give the Lord his proper place and then you can give an answer to every man with meekness and fear. Friends, let me encourage you, if God doesn't have his proper place in your life today, today would be a great day to surrender it all to him. What a blessing it is, friends, when we just simply give it to him. Friend, if you are listening and you do not know the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, let me encourage you not to get wrapped up in religion. Don't get caught wrapped up in what people say. You get in the Word of God and you find out what God says in His Word. Read the Gospel of John. Reread the Gospel of John. Read the Book of Romans. Find out what the Word of God says about this matter of salvation. And Christian, let me encourage you, if you've not surrendered your will, to the will of God, let me encourage you today to surrender your all to him. After all, friends, it is your reasonable service. 
When we do that, when he's sanctified, we'll be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh the reason of the hope that he's in us. Nobody says with meekness and fear. It's not in pride that we give the answer. It's in meekness and fear. It's not a better than you attitude. It's the only reason I am what I am is because of the grace of God. Let's be ready to give an answer to the people that ask us of the hope that we have every day.